What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? So, first of all, you guys, I want to say happy late Easter. You know, I didn't even know it was Easter this Sunday, okay? I be so busy working and, you know, as an adult, I don't, like, dress up in my favorite Easter bonnet. I don't, like, do all of that crazy stuff. I just think sometimes that it's a little bit overrated, just like other holidays. So, forgive me if some of you guys really don't feel that way, but a bitch like me do. Like, sometimes it's a little bit overrated. Um, hmm. Trying to figure out what's going on with my camera settings because I'm at it again fixing shit. So, bear with me one second. Okay, so hopefully that's good for right now. So, yeah, like I was saying, I don't celebrate. Sorry, just don't. But anyway, I wanted to send a couple of shout-outs and thank yous because... First of all, you guys, I really appreciate when I go to my post office box and I get thank you letters, thank you cards, um, you know what I'm saying, thank you gifts. Girl, I love gifts, I love cards, I love letters, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. And if you don't know that I have a P.O. box, you can check the info box below. So a young lady, <clears throat> excuse me, a young lady by the name of Miss McCormick, Excuse me. Her last name is Miss McCormick. I couldn't make out the writing of her first name on the box because thanks to the post office, I could only get the last name. But Miss McCormick sent me some authentic, real bitches, real Versace perfume. Hello. Okay, first of all, when I seen this, I was, first of all, the packaging, it, the, the box was wrapped up. It was wrapped up in its original box and it just had brown paper wrapped around it. So I was like, what is this heavy in here? Is it a bomb? No, I didn't think it was a bomb, but I didn't know what it was. So when I opened it, I was like, oh my God, are you serious right now? Because I ain't never in my life have Versace perfume. Okay. Never. So when I seen this, I was like, oh my God, I was so fucking happy. Okay. And this one is the bright crystal, but look, it got the little Versace like emblem right here okay look at the bottle this is like so nice okay a bitch be smelling real good i sprayed this on that night okay I, you know since my husband is home now i could smell good for somebody like I, yeah okay a bitch just smell good for her own self but at nighttime i wasn't like putting on body spray or perfumes i was just going to bed like you know i'll wash and i'll just put on some lotion and go to bed but now, you know, got to smell real good and stuff. So I sprayed this on that night, the next morning, the next night. You know, I forgot about today. So let me just spray a little bit today. But yes, I wanted to tell Miss McCormick, and I hope you're watching this video, girl. And if you are, please shoot me an email or leave a comment below. Talk, just say, you know, I'm watching. But I wanted to tell you, thank you so much for this. Like, for real, I love perfume. And this was like so, like, I really just, this is a very nice gift. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Okay. And I know my husband do too, because he was like, you smell good. You smell good. I freaking love this perfume. Like, I would have never thought to get this for myself because the Versace perfumes that I have smelled, they were always masculine ones. So I really didn't know, but this smells beautiful. So if you guys have ever tried Bright Crystal by Versace, let me know what you think of this, but this perfume... Oh. Thank you, Miss McCormick, so much. I really appreciate this. A girl was like, mm, this, this is a very good smelling perfume. So I appreciate this. Truly, truly, truly appreciate this. And also, my girl, um, she has, one of my subscribers, she has opened up an online business. And you know, I like to share shit. I like to tell you guys about stuff. I did put this video, her, her, her product in my video, but my hair video, but I wanted to show it in this video because I, like at first when I saw them on the page, I was like, they cute, but I think I have a pair that's similar to that shape. But then when I got them and I put them on in the video, girl, I was like floored. I was like, oh, bitch, look cute. Hello. Mm. Okay. So My Fabule Eyes, I think that's how you say it, My Fabule Eyes, is an eye shade place. Like, you know, shady glasses, you know, eyeglasses, sunglasses. She sells sunglasses. So she sent me two pairs. She let me pick out two pairs. And these ones right here, bitch, is my favorite. Like, okay. They remind me of like Gucci Inspire. I don't know, but I'm loving these. Like, 
I love big oversized glasses. You have to see how it looked with the actual hair that I had on in the video for y'all to get the full effect. So like right now, it's not looking like much of anything. I just look like April. I got on a Calvin Klein t-shirt and some of my, and a hat and a wig, which is, this is my favorite wig. Okay. So let's just, this is one of my favorite wigs now. But these glasses is like bomb as hell. And you know what's so cool about these? The lens is not hitting my lashes, bitch. I'm loving. These are my favorites from her collection. Like, I have probably, like, um, now, last time I counted, I had, like, 80 pair of glasses. So, I probably got, like, about 86, 87 pair of sunglasses. But these are hitting right here. Like, you, the lens, the clarity is so clear, okay? And you know how you'll get some sunglasses, shades, whatever you want to call Sometimes they're too dark. These are like not too light, not too dark. They're not even in a medium. They give you like this nice hue color, like this nice color. So it's not too much darkness because I can't stand when it's too dark, especially if I want to wear them in a the store. But I like the fit of them. They fit comfortably on my nose. And if you have like a big face or a big long head, you definitely need long, like big oversized sunglasses because like my head is long. Okay. And so like, I tell y'all that all the time. And like my hairline, my natural hairline is like right here. So, you know what I'm saying? So I have like a long head and Big sunglasses always work best for me. So if you got like a long head, bitch, don't front. If you got a long head, just be real about your shit. Get you a pair of oversized sunglasses. You know, it'll take away from the bigness. Don't act like you ain't heady monster, bitch, because I am. I got a long head. So I got these, which I like. You know what I'm saying? These is cute. And she added some new ones on her website, which are really cute too. So y'all might want to check them out because I was trying to get me a pair of them new ones, but they weren't even available yet. And so I got these. These are totally different for me because I don't be wearing sunglasses like this. Like, cause I, like I said, my head is long. So these little sunglasses, like, you know, you have to wear like the right hair and accessories for it. You can't just think like you could just pull them off. Like, you know, like a wig is an accessory. So is the sunglasses. So these sunglasses don't go with this accessory on my head unless I fix it up. But I thought these were cute too, only because look at the shape of them. They're totally different. Then they have like that mirror effect. It's like a cat eye. They're very sleek and like flat. They lay totally flat. So I thought these was like really, really cute. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is definitely not my style of choice of sunglasses. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is definitely not my style or choice of sunglasses because I'm more or less like like huge sunglasses. If you ever look at my collection, they're really big. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I was supposed to uh, mention in this video? But they're really oversized sunglasses is me. I love oversized. So this is totally different for me. And I still think they're cute. They're very delicate. So these folds up easy. They're very lightweight. You can easily put these in like a inside pocket. I wouldn't say put them in your back pocket, but yes, you guys want to check out her shades. You know what I'm saying? Spring is here. Summertime about to be blinging hot, sunny, and you know, bitches be out trying to show shade, side eye, or you might be that bitch that like the side eye. So what better way to side eye is with a nice pair of sunglasses. Okay. Some shade wear, put on your shady glasses and you can side eye a bitch on the low without her even knowing. So then you ain't got no beef. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying be a punk, but don't nobody really want to fight. It's not ladylike to fight. But if you want to be side-eyeing somebody or a dude or whatever, you got you some sunglasses, bitch. Yes. Get you some sunglasses. So, yes, check out the information box below for my fabulous eyes. I swear to God, you guys, I feel like I'm missing something. Like, I swear. I'm, like, looking like... Did I forget something? Like, I don't know, but you know what? I've, I've had a lot to do lately. I've been super busy. I had like a wig sale that I just posted and I just came back from the post office. Plus I got some more wigs in the mail and I also got some synthetic lace fronts. So this is about to be the next one. I've been waiting for this for a minute to be popping. This is the sensational Cloud9 Swiss Lace What Lace, okay? Hair Illusion Lace Wig. What lace? So this one is Flamboyage Caramel. This is Morgan. So she gonna be up this Thursday. I'm gonna do a video for her tomorrow from Sam's Beauty, honey. And then this is a new one by Sensational. This is um, Amani. This, this wig is so pretty. This is the 
natural parting from edge to crown. Well, I don't know about that, but this wig looks beautiful. So I'm going to, for some reason, I feel like I did this one. Um, but yeah, we got some wigs popping. We'll have another sale out. Maybe hopefully this Saturday. If not, then Sunday, I'm going to have another sale because this one was the Easter sale. So, you know. But you guys, that was that's been about it. I I have not really been up to much that I can think of. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only thing that I has been up in my life is my fucking weight. Okay, did I get on the scale last night? And that bitch said two o fucking one, two o one. I said, oh my god, babe, I'm fat. I'm just fat now. This is what I was saying to my husband, and he was like, you're not fat, but I feel like it. Like you know what? Why is all the goddamn weight, all the weight is going right here, like underneath the boobs, like to the midsection, the, this, like I didn't, like I needed this already. Like I don't have an issue with this already. Like a bitch needs this. I don't need my stomach to get any flabbier or bigger. So that and my hips and my butt got bigger. So I'm happy about that, but I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, I'm, I, I just... Listen, look, I'm like, I I stopped going to the weight doctor and I really did like to go every week because it made me feel motivated, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like every time I would go, I needed to make sure that I was at least the same weight or less, never over, only because I felt kind of embarrassed. And though they never said anything negative to you about your weight gain, I just felt like for me, it was an embarrassment because just that's, that's just how I felt. So I, it motivated me to make sure that I did the right thing. So I stopped going for like, probably like, I want to say like uh, two months now because I got tired of paying. Like, you know, that shit ain't for free. And even though the package deal that I got was $30 a week, like I don't feel like I should have to <laughs> pay somebody to motivate me. Like, you know, and also you do get like, you know, you get your vitamins and stuff, which I can buy on my own. But I feel like now I just have to go back. Like I really didn't want to. And I'm trying to like, I don't understand why I'm, I just don't get it. Like, why is this my weight? go up and down so much and it's like so easy for me to gain weight and then it just be like and it'd be easy for me to lose it too so like I could lose like two pounds in one day but you know what that day I have been running around and then I don't eat nothing and then you know when you don't eat shit that's not good for your metabolism that will make you store the fat which will make you keep the fat on so you know I'm I'm so busy a lot that I never really get, have a moment to eat breakfast or lunch or snack so by the time I eat it's super late and then you know I smoke weed so you know the end of the night if I'm smoking that you know I'm gonna get the munchies and this is not what I wanted like seriously for me before before I had lost all this weight I had smoked a lot and um, well, not a lot, but I smoked enough. And at night, I would eat till my stomach was so tight that I couldn't breathe. And that's how I gained all that weight. So then I stopped smoking and I stopped drinking. And I, you know, I started eating healthy and I was good. But now I smoke weed again and I don't drink. And, but, you know, I like the munchies. And the one thing that I have to do is get under control is to not eat late at night, like at one or two in the morning. So, you know, at one or two in the morning while I'm eating late, it's because. Well, you know, I have my little, I have my nighttime exercise, okay, with my husband. Sometimes it makes you hungry when you're done, so you know what I'm saying. So that is the reason why I get out the bed and eat, but I'm going to have to stop that. Like, I'm going to have to be in control and be like, April, you... Regardless of after sex, you just need to not eat. Just take your ass to sleep. And then sometimes I do go to sleep, but then it's like, he want a snack, I want a snack. And then we go to sleep. It's not cool because I'm not trying to gain my weight back that I have worked so hard for. So I'm about to go back to the weight doctor. And you know what I'm saying? We got like a we got a punching bag in our backyard. We got weights and stuff. Um, so I don't really know why I haven't listen, I'm not trying to be outside in the heat anyway. But I'm going to have to really step it up a notch. So, But anyway, so let's just get into this real talk real quick because I got some shit that I have to do. Um, you guys already know the drill. If you have a real talk that you in need of assistance with, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you got a real talk about somebody that you is, you know, afraid that will see it on my channel, you could always change the names of those people you talking about. Like, so if her name is really Sharon, call that bitch Mary. And just let me know you changed the name. 
names. But if you don't change the names, probably 99.9.9, you know, 99.99% baby zaddies. I will change the name for you if you don't mention it. Okay, so send me an email. My email address is down below. Let's get into this video. And also check the information box below for Fabulous Eyes. And also thank you so much, Miss McCormick, for this perfume. I bet you're gonna smell good while she do this real talk real quick. Huh? 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 What? Hello, Miss April. You can call me Rose. I revised this real talk because I wasn't I was talking too fast and it didn't make any sense. So let's start with this real talk. In the beginning, I started this job last June of 2018. I work as a housekeeper in the pediatric in this pediatric hospital. So me and this co-worker who we are going to call Z have been talking. She was real cool at work and sometimes we would talk on the phone and whatnot. Until this new manager who came back in mid-July, close to August, we call her Stacy. We're going to call the, um, the new manager Stacy. Stacy liked me and thought I was a real hard worker, which I am. And I always give and, and I always give and a few employees from work, um, employee, what, what? Stacy liked me and thought I was a real hard worker and always gives and a few employees from work, employee of the month except for Z. So basically, Stacy, the new manager, will give employees from work employee of the month. But the only person she never gave any employee of the month to was Z, which is um, Rose's friend from work. They speak to each other on the phone and shit. So Z felt some type of way. And she was a little upset about not getting employee of the month and started expressing her anger to a few other employees and myself. I told her, maybe you should talk to Stacy, the manager. And Z kept rejecting that advice I gave her. A few months went by, Z stated that she feels Stacy does not like her and that every time she walks by, Stacy gives Z a shady high and whatnot. I didn't see it at first, so I told her to try not to take it personal and maybe don't say hi. Next time, keep it moving. Focus on work, since that's why we are all here for in the first place. After a while, I did notice Stacy been treating Z weird and unfair. And so the next time Z mentioned it to me, I recommended that she talk to the main manager. And um, we're going to call him Bob or HR. If she is feeling bullied, she should go ahead and talk to the main manager and HR. Because personally talking to me, I don't know if I can do anything since I am not involved in any of this. So Z talks to the main manager and HR in the same room at the same time. I felt good for her, happy for her. And so the main manager and the HR said they are all going to have a meeting with her and Stacy this coming Friday. Well, that same day, Stacy called me into the office, which is like the supervisor, and was talking about my work ethic, saying she wants me to step up and do some more work and pick up some more days so I can move up in the company with housekeeping. And I told Stacy, okay. But in my head, I thought, I don't want to move up and be a leader or manager for housekeeping. Girl, please, I'm just doing this to get my CNA license and move up and be a CNA in the hospital since I'm going to school for nursing. Not be no freaking manager for housekeeping. She got a point. And then she mentioned quickly not to get wrapped up in the drama here. And I said, oh, I'm not. I'm just focused on my work. I'm staying out of anything. So, you know, I went back to work. And I guess Z, who is still my friend at work, saw that I got pulled into the office, which was the same day that she, the main manager and HR had a meeting. She started panicking and, and I told her and thought, excuse me, Z saw that I got pulled in the office and she also thought that I was panicking. Um, and I told her I got pulled in not because of her. Oh, excuse me. Z saw I got pulled into the office and she started panicking. So I let her know I got pulled in not because of you. I told her I was pulled in just to do some more work around the hospital and that I'm not involved with any of this drama here in the hospital. Z started catching an attitude with me. 
She pulled you in the office because of me. I explained to her me getting pulled in the office had nothing to do with her. After the conversation, she started acting weird. Z just started acting weird around me. We all just went home from work. Today, she sent me a Facebook message. Z sent me a Facebook message. And it says, I feel hurt about the entire situation and I'm getting a new locker. And I'm going to give you your space. Since I don't know, since I know that the supervisor, Stacy doesn't want me around you. And I don't want to jeopardize your job. Rose said, Z, unfriended her on Facebook as well. I'm shocked, but like a little bit upset because that meeting had nothing to do with her. And I don't know how many times I have to explain that. I am starting to feel that Z wanted me to be involved with the situation, which is not fair. Ever since that day, I told Z that, that I told her and Stacy that I'm not involved in any of this drama at work. Please don't involve me in it. That's when Z started having an attitude, as if Z wanted me to tell Stacy I'm involved and you're wrong for how you've been treating Z. I'm supposed to go to the supervisor, Stacy, and just let her know um, I'm involved and it's not fair the way you've been treating um, Stacy or Z rather. Stacy, um, when I told Stacy I was not, when I told the supervisor Stacy that I was not involved, she didn't get mad. She was kind of happy and glad that I wasn't, and I kept it moving. Please let me know what else to do. I truly would appreciate your help. Thank you so much. So basically, we're gonna ball this down. Rose is the one who wrote me. Rose has a coworker friend, a friend from work named Z. Okay, and Z has been working just as hard, do what she's supposed to do. Well, a new manager, a new assistant manager, a new supervisor, whatever you want to call her, by the name of Stacy, came to the work kind of like mid-August, beginning of August. And everybody that's been doing their job there at the housekeeping, at the hospital for housekeeping, have been getting awards, awards like, you know, employee of the month, that shit, you know what I'm saying? The only person that hasn't been getting any of these awards is Rose's friend, her work friend, Z, which she said she feels like she deserves it. Not only that, but Z is telling Rose, Rose is the one that wrote me, how the new supervisor manager, Stacy, is just giving her side eye. She be treating her all weird. She don't think she like her, et cetera, et cetera. So Rose didn't notice this in the beginning, but then she started to notice it. So what do you do? Like, okay, so you got your coworker friend and you got your supervisor. You notice that there's some type of tension, you know what I'm saying? And your friend, your coworker friend is coming to you talking about, she don't like me. She treat me this way. She treat me that way. First of all, like I tell y'all bitches all the motherfucking time, this work, this ain't place to be making friends and hanging the fuck out. This work is about money. This money. We're going to call it money. This money. Okay. This, this new money, old money, this shit is money. Okay. This bills, this money. I don't go to work to make friends with nobody. So if you just so happen to be my coworker, work friend, then that's probably all you going to motherfucking be. Because at five o'clock, I'm not trying to fuck with nobody, but my, my damn self, like I'm going to try to get in my ride and peel the fuck off. This is why I don't have a nine to five job because I'm not a friendly motherfucker when it comes to people at work. We're not about to be friends. I'm here for a job. Okay. I thought I heard Tingy gun. But also, I'm not about to get involved in anybody else's drama and bullshit, especially at the workplace, okay? First of all, main reason why we go find a job is because we need money because we got to survive. Two, I mind my business. I don't give a fuck what it is. If you got some, if we friends, if me and you is like besties and you got some beef with some bitch, I'm going to come through. But I'm not about to jump her with you or anything. I, if y'all got beef, then I'm going to stand by and hopefully resolve. Y'all can resolve it like two grown adults. Or maybe at that point, I might have to be neutral, okay? But me personally, I don't try to get involved in nobody's bullshit and drama, especially at the workplace. That's your friend. I understand that. You know what I'm saying, Rose? But she's your work friend. Y'all ain't, you ain't mentioned nowhere in that email that she been your friend forever. However, even if she been your friend forever, it's not your place and it's definitely not your business to get involved in her shit. So if the manager don't like her, the supervisor don't like her, she ain't been getting employee of the month, but everybody else has 
then they might be something that you just ain't seeing that the manager, the supervisor, and whoever else is noticing in her. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just the supervisor Stacy's job to give out employee of the month. I'm pretty sure she got to run that through, you know what I'm saying, other avenues, other fucking people before she say, well, this person getting employee of the month or this person getting employee of the month. I don't think like it's her job job where she could just decide on her own. I think there has to be like some type of criteria where other people are involved in it. But even so, if it ain't and it's just her picking it out, then you know what? First of all, let me tell you this one. I don't give two fucks about employee of the month shit. I mean, that's cool if you get employee of the month, but I'd rather you not put my motherfucking picture up on the wall for everybody to see, whether it be in the main part of the job where uh, staff and fucking customers or whoever or clients can see my photos or in the back. I just wouldn't want to be employee of the month per a person. I don't want you to put my picture up. I don't need you to acknowledge me by that, by giving me a fucking plaque on the wall. I don't give two fucks. Bitch, give me some extra money, and I'm happy with that. So that right there to me is kind of like childish because a lot of people like, oh, well, if I don't get this and somebody else got that and she got this and she got that. And first of all, worry about what the fuck you get. That's the problem. Everybody always worry about what somebody else fucking getting and you can't improve yourself. As long as you continuously worry about what the next bitch got or the next nigga got, you ain't going to have shit. What the fuck is you worried about a dumb ass fucking employee of the month award? To me, that's like real fucking stupid. And I'm not even going to say it's real stupid because it's really not really stupid because, you know, I would want some recognition for what the fuck I did, but I don't want everybody else to know about it. I don't want my picture. I don't give two fucks, but you know what I'm saying? We go to work for a paycheck, not for motherfucking awards and nothing like that. Bitch, I take the paycheck. Give me a bonus for being an employee of the month. However, if you seeing somebody that your co-worker friend has issues with, it's still your place to mind your own business. Now, she got a problem. You did the right thing. You are not involved in it, Rose. There's, you should not have been involved in it. And you did the right thing by letting your work friend Z know that I'm not going to be involved with it. But, you know, I'll listen to you and I'll also give you advice as to who to go speak to. So that way, maybe all of this can be, you know what I'm saying, talked and spoken about and then the issue could be deaded. That would be me. Go here. Go there. I'm not getting involved. I'm not even going to really give you no advice except for you need to go speak to HR and a real manager. That's about it. But I don't really think like it's a big deal as long as that bitch is not disrespected. But then there are some issues where you are disrespected because if you shady eyeing me and side eyeing me and being disrespectful to me with your eyes, your looks or whatever, or how you treat me amongst others, then it's an issue. It's a total disrespect issue. But award, I wouldn't really be too concerned about getting no employee of the month award, but I would be concerned about the lack of respect by someone who is supposed to be a team leader in the facility. You know what I'm saying? Like, who does that? You, this is the problem that I have. And I'm sorry, um, but I worked for a girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? We was best friends. We was good friends, rather. And then she became supervisor, and the bitch thought that I was supposed to snitch on her at Fidelis and shit. And like me, I told you guys this in a few videos back. I don't like working for females. Female bought, female supervisors, female managers, female team leaders. It's, it, and I don't know if it's just me, but I've noticed this with several jobs that I've had, and they have had women as like the main title, like they've been in charge. These bitches get besides themselves sometimes. Females who are like bosses or supervisors, they get besides themselves. They feel like they got the motherfucking key to the whole city half the time. Like, bitch, you just a motherfucking manager at McDonald's. Go sit the fuck down and flip a burger somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they get really high and mighty. And I've seen this even not even, not even just for uh, companies that I've worked for, but just in public. Like, let's take, for instance, the McDonald's that's down the street for me. There's too much bullshit at that McDonald's. And I've gotten into two fights at that McDonald's, both with managers and both of these was bitches, okay? The first one, you know, it was hot as fuck outside. I really didn't want to go outside. I had Uber Eats pick up some McDonald's for my kids because it was like 115 degrees. So, you know, of course you have to pay an extra $5. This McDonald's, they notorious for forgetting shit. And I wanted to make sure that all my shit was... Um, 
Anyway, when I got my food delivered, like mad shit was being missed. What mad shit was missing? Like it was like four things that was missing. And of course, I wasn't about to call Uber Eats back and tell them about the shit. So what did I do? I wasn't really too concerned about what was missing. It was like two sodas, some apple slices, and I think like some fries. I still really didn't even care, but I did call and try to advise them on how maybe they could, you know, better their forgot to leave shit ratio. And as I was on the phone with the young lady, the girl, the manager, you know, she goes, well, what do you want me to do about it? You know, we, first of all, we was already going back and forth and I was trying to be real patient because I don't really have much patience. So my tolerance level is like this. And like I said, it was 115 degrees outside and I wasn't trying to go back outside anymore. So I paid an extra $5 for a delivery, which was not even complete. And now that I'm calling you McDonald's and I'm speaking with the manager and I'm telling you the issues that I'm having with you guys and how you guys constantly forgetting stuff and et cetera, et cetera. And maybe there should be other ways that you can improve so that way you don't have these issues. This bitch says to me, well, what do you want me to do about it? I said to her, excuse me, what? Yeah, what do you want me to fucking do about it? Ah, yeah, she used the F-bomb to me. I was surprised. I don't think she thought that I was going to come down there. And I had to inform her, did you just fucking talk to me like that? Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Did this bitch curse me out and hung up on me? I said, you know what? Man, listen, this bitch got the wrong motherfucker. Not today. Let, let me get in my motherfucking ride. I'm going to drive down the block because it's like two blocks from my house. And I'm going to go to McDonald's. Yeah, I know. I pay for Uber Eats. Yeah, I know. But I, I'm going to go there because I want my missing shit with my receipt. And I'm going to also have to put this bitch in her place. So when I get there, we got this girl at the register, this black girl. She young. This bitch trying to tell me about, oh, well, I'm sorry. I forgot. Bitch, you sorry. You right. You got that bad, nappy-ass motherfucking synthetic wig on, bitch. Go take that shit off and put it in the deep fry. Because you have no business being up here as the cashier at McDonald's looking like that. And you talk about you sorry about how you forgot shit. And you trying to give me fucking attitude, too? Bitch, please, let's not come with the heat through. Let me speak to the girl who got on the phone, the manager. Why? I'm the one who called and she just cussed me out. So, you know, I'm standing there waiting. Here come this little slinky trailer park trash looking bitch, okay? Well, yeah, can I help you? You know, I'm like, oh, so what was the problem? You want to go ahead and call people all kind of derogatory shit, negative shit on the phone, curse me out, and then hang the fuck up? Well, I'm here right now, bitch. What's up? Yeah, I went in there. I was like, yeah, I'm here right now, bitch. What's up? Then she tried to get smart and then tried to walk off by the deep fryer and called me a motherfucking bitch. Even though I already called her one, but bitch, you started this shit because you got nasty, overly nasty with me on the phone. Cursed me out like, what the fuck, McDonald's? And um, yeah, so as she said this shit, I said, what the fuck did you just say to me? Because she said a little bit extra shit and walked off, tried to walk around the corner to the um, deep fryer. You know, I had to stop my daughter, Nay. You know, my daughter, Nay, who be in the videos. This, because there's an opening right there. These teenagers move mighty fast. The blink of an eye. When that girl said, bitch, all I know is Nay was like by where they put the food out to, to send out, like, you know, the orders. And I was like, Oh, shit. She about to go attack this woman. I had to come up, run up behind Nay because the black girl who was trying to be smart when I first came in, she was trying to stop her. And Nay had shoved her to the side. Nay's a little one, but she's a feisty fight. That bitch will beat so anybody ass. She's a fighter. She will fight you to the death. But she's a respectable person. And she's a nerd, but she don't play that shit. Don't be disrespectful. Do not be disrespectful. So... Yeah, I had to end up getting Nay, and I had just caught her. They probably was about like this much apart, okay? Nay from attacking the manager. I had to come up behind her, yoke her up real quick, and drag her out of the thing. Did this fucking bitch call the police, the motherfucking manager? I don't give a fuck about the police. I'm going to need the shit that I came here for. I could care less like I told her about the fucking police. Bitch, I'm going to need with the... Oh, she's down here threatening me. Bitch, I don't care. I'm going to need my motherfucking meals to be correct. So, you know, she thought I was going to get scared and run off, but I don't give a fuck about them. Bitch, I'll bail myself out as soon as I get in there. 
what. And then I'm still come back here and terrorize your punk ass. So, you know, um, the cops, um, you know, they came and words were spoken. Like, you know, I just need my shit and I'm not going to be disrespected. She has a point, ma'am. Like she, like the police officer says, customer has a point, ma'am. I got my shit and I went home. Maybe like a week or two later, I'm in the drive-thru now. Getting my grandson some shit. Who's working the drive-thru? This motherfucking bitch, okay? I pull up to the drive-thru and I looked at her and I was like, oh, what's up? You remember me? She started laughing and rolled her eyes and walks off and tells somebody else to give me my food. <laughs> really, bitch? I come up in this motherfucking fuck your ass up like I had to tell her. And see, this is not my character. And I mean, then again, it is. Like, you know, I just don't have tolerance for disrespect. And if you start some shit with me, bitch, I'm going to torture you and bother you until I'm done and I'm tired of leaving you the fuck alone. Okay? That's just petty ways sometimes. Like, because I don't really like beef and I don't like nobody starting no shit with me okay and if you start some shit with me and then you try to back the fuck up out of it i may let you slide and give you a pass but then there's sometimes where it's like nah fuck that now you're about to pay you are going to learn a motherfucking lesson i'm going to punish you like you one of my motherfucking five children i care less okay so this is the shit that i talk about it's a job we go to work to work and it's places like McDonald's or other places that really don't have much respect and, you know, they got people's faces up on plaques talking about employee of the month and shit like that. That's why I say it's not really a big deal to me because some of these employees ain't worth shit. And I really do believe like, you know what I'm saying? This is a matter that you do not need to be involved in. I could see if your work friend was sexually harassed, you know what I'm saying, at work, like sexually harassed at work by, let's say, anybody at work, then I would definitely say you should get involved because that's not fair or was any type of way physically abused, then I really feel like you should get involved or racially profiled. Or ra then of course, but if she got a beef, like, oh, I don't think she liked me and she don't like, bitch, that's not your place. Stay the fuck out of it and mind your business. You gave her the best, best advice you could give her, which is go to HR and talk it out. Not bring that shit to me because I don't want to hear it. But now, you know what I'm saying? Rose's friend Z is acting all weird. She done moved her locker. I guess they was either sharing a locker because she's not I'm gonna get my own. So maybe they were sharing a locker and now she's got her own. She's unfriended her on Facebook and also basically said, I'm not gonna bother you because I don't want to jeopardize your job. But Rose did tell her, the reason why I was pulled into the office, bitch, is not because of you. You're not that special. No, she didn't say all that, but you know what I'm saying? She said, I was asked to do more work in the hospital so she could basically move up. But Z still keeps insisting that it was about her. See, this is the shit that I don't like, silly bitches. If I told you that this shit is not about you or if I told you something, then that's what the fuck it is, okay? Please don't ask me like a million times and then try to make a little thing out of nothing or a big thing out of nothing. Please don't do that to me because I really don't want to have to curse you the fuck out, especially if I feel like you're my friend or my associate. Like, I don't really like going around hurting anybody's feelings. So I really prefer people not to do dumb shit or just stay away from me with it. So, you know what I'm saying? Now Z is upset with Rose and she don't want to speak to her. She acting real shady. What should she do? Let me tell you something. If you told that bitch that, Rose, if you told Z that the reason why you was pulled in the office was because of work-related issues, meaning they want you to step it up, they want you to move up in the ladder, then that's all there should be. You know what I'm saying? If she was really your friend, she wouldn't even question that shit. She would have never came to you in the first place because she would believe in you. And second of all, even if you did just so righteously tell her the reason why you went in there, then that was your word and your word is your bond. She shouldn't have to keep second guessing and then going on fucking Facebook unfriending says the messages. Listen, let me tell you something about the internet, okay? Social media is a fucking drug. Social media is definitely a drug and it will have you addicted and then it'll have your dumb ass do all kind of dumb shit because it's a drug and it's addicting and you don't know what the fuck to do better okay or you don't know no better and i really feel like people 
allow Facebook and any type of social media dictate and run their life. And that's the part that really bugs me out. Because some of y'all sit on there all motherfucking day scrolling through the gram or, th- or, scrolling, or scrolling through Facebook looking at people's posts and feeds. And to me, that's just like really fucking ridiculously boring. But everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But I really feel like this. If your friend, your so-called work friend, is getting besides herself, she's getting out of character. She's acting like, oh, you don't trust, you don't, you, you, you're not on my team, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Then let that bitch be, okay? Because those type of whiny little bitches is not the type of friends that you need. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand we all need to be here for somebody, but I'm not about to be fucking irritated and stressed the fuck out because you got some drama at your workplace, our workplace, and you expect me to get involved in it, bitch. I'm not here for that. I'm here for a paycheck. Are you paying my rent? No, then go ahead with yourself. I think you did the right thing, Rose, by letting her know that you're not involved in where to go through. Those are the best tunnels or avenues to go through. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to go to the head leader of the company or HR, whatever. Whatever is, you know, most convenient. But I really do think, like, that's what you're here for is to work. And I really do believe that other people should mind their business and stay the fuck out of it. And you did that. It's work, all right? It's work. People... People get out of hand with shit. Like, it's motherfucking work. Stop trying to make all these friends at work and shit. It's a work. It's a paycheck. Think of that shit. It's, it's just paycheck. To... Listen. Let me tell y'all something. I, I have no problems with people making friends at work. But don't let that shit cloud your judgment, okay? Seriously, do not let that shit cloud your judgment because those people that you think are your friends at work are your allies, you know what I'm saying? They are your worst motherfucking enemies. You can tell them one thing about Sharon at the front desk and she'll go tell Sharon at the front desk something totally different that you did not say, okay? So this is where I tell you guys, it's work, 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 not work friend, work friend, work friend. If you got too many little, like, you know what I'm saying, friends at work it just starts to get real cloudy your judgment starts to go a little bit overboard you know what i'm saying you getting too involved in shit you have to limit yourself and you also have to think this is a job this is a paycheck bitch i'm not here to be your friend we could socialize but you have to be very leery of what you tell people and what people tell you because before you know it or any type of way you can end up in some drama so i really do feel like you did the right thing by not getting involved because it's not your place and if that bitch don't want to be your friend and talk to you she want to move her motherfucking locker like we in high school then let her go ahead because that's just childish and nobody has time for it and i could totally understand why you wouldn't want to be her friend anymore i know i wouldn't okay let's not act childish i told you that it's not about you what the fuck more can i do for you hmm so anyway, leave your opinions down below for Rose. If you had a situation that you had a work friend and you felt like she was being bullied, would you tell her to go to the human resources or would you get involved in the shit? Me, April, I'm mind my business because that's what the fuck I do. I mind my business. Okay, you guys, so here's the last real talk. I am so tired, like sleepy tired, okay? Hi, April. My name is Bree. I have been watching your videos for almost a year now. I love your personality and the advice you give. I love the support and advice that your followers leave in the comments as well. I know you're busy, so I totally understand if you cannot get to my real talk, but any advice you can offer would be helpful. I will try to keep this short, but April, this shit is messy. Basically, it's like this. My biological mom, Carrie, and father, Terrell, were involved in gang activity from the second I was born. Always into some sort of trouble. My siblings and I have been in and out of her custody for years. Ultimately, my mom waived her rights to me and my aunt and uncle ended up adopting me when I was nine years old. However, they made sure it was an open adoption and they would always make sure I understood who my biological mother was. Carrie kept my other two brothers and sisters in her custody which means her mother. My mother, Carrie, kept my other two brothers and sisters in her custody. And after I was put up for adoption, she had three more kids, which only caused tension between us, especially all of my, especially because all my other siblings are white. I was the only mixed child she had, which would not mean much if she hadn't used products on me. Um, when, what, which would not mean much if she hadn't used products on me when I was, when I was little to lighten my skin and she would tell me it was to make me beautiful. She also told me when I was little, my father is a nigger and how she hated him. She hated them. Oh, wait, I'm, my father is a nigger 
and how she hated them. I guess she hates black people. This really messed me up inside, and I started to hate. I started to hate my own ethnicity. I can never pronounce it. And thought if I was white or prettier, maybe she'd like me. I never ended up having much of a relationship with my father, Terrell. I think I only remember seeing him maybe three times in my life. He was basically out of the picture shortly after I was born. My mom tried to stay part of my life, but usually only became around when she wanted money for my aunt and uncle or when I was messed up on whatever drug or when she was messed up on whatever drug. So I am now 24 and recently this past year, my mom Carrie has been really active in my life. It felt nice getting to know her more and building a relationship, but now I think it was a mistake. A few months ago, she started asking for things like rides and money, never big amounts. She always said it was for her medicine or rent and she'd pay me back. So stupidly, I would give it, I would give it to her. And of course she never paid me back. A few weeks ago, she said she needed a th she needed three thousand dollars to put down on a trailer. I told her no, I didn't have it, and she had a total spaz attack on me. She was calling me a broke nigga and all sorts of stuff. So we stopped speaking. She recently reached out to me through text to apologize, and she said she wanted to get together again. April, I really want her in my life because at the end of the day, that is my biological mom and I am type jealous of my siblings because of their relationship with her. But it seems like my, bi bi my biracial race is an issue for her, even though she was with the black man to concede me, or maybe this is all in my head. What should I do? Thank you for your time. P.S. I'm so happy for you and your husband. Glad to see you and him are reunited and happy. So, thank you, Bree. That's the name I made up for her. Okay. So, I had to leave because Tinky be acting up. Okay. So, yeah, I had to go downstairs and go get him because he be acting up. He think my husband is a toy. I had to tell him he is not a motherfucking toy. You cannot be following up underneath him all the time. Stop calling. <sighs> Listen, he think he's one of his toys. He just always want to be around and play with him. But, you know. Anyway. So, here's the situation. Bree is adopted by her aunt and her uncle. Her mom is white and her bio her biological mom is white and her biological dad is black, okay? But Bree was adopted by her aunt and uncle because her mom couldn't really care for her. She was on drugs. She didn't really take care of her. However, she gave Bree up for adoption but kept all her fully 100% white children, but gave Brie up for adoption and be, and be saying the N word, like, you know what I'm saying? But you're not even really in Brie's life like that. She's not really in Brie's life like that. She come and go, make call for rides, favors, you know what I'm saying? Brie started being happy because her mom, her biological mom, Carrie, started becoming, you know what I'm saying, more um, sociable with her, more inter more active interactive with her her you know what I'm saying they started hanging out they started coming around but then Bree's biological mother also hey can I get a ride hey can I get some money I'll pay you back it's for my medication and rent but Bree never got the money back then hey you got three thousand dollars I gotta put down on a trailer Bree didn't have it and then her mother spazzed the fuck out and called her a broke nigga First of all, let me tell and then try to apologize via text message. First of all, let me tell you something. If you and but wait, 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 Bree's biological mother also gave her up for adoption and then turned around and had like two or three more kids. And so all the kids are white, white, and Bree's the only one that is biracial. So let me tell you something. First of all, we can get to know each other, we can get to talking, because you are my biological mother. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here. But I will feel some type of way if you gave me the only biracial child up for adoption, but all the other siblings, I don't give a fuck if they was Chinese, all the way black, all the way Hispanic, whatever. I don't give two fucks, okay? Why am I the one who has to be, you know what I'm saying, 
put up for adoption. Is my lens dirty? I'm looking at my lens. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do I have to be the one who's put up for adoption? But you can keep all the other kids. And then on top of that, you really don't socialize with me like that. But then when you do, you need a handout, a favor, a rise, some money, a cup of soup, a fucking meal, a bus ticket. I don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? But you need something. And then you claiming it's for your bills, your medication, your rent. But I'm going to give it back to you. But you just motherfucking dope. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. And then you come, let me, let me, and then you ask for $3,000, bitch, please. Let me tell you something. If your mama, your biological mama ain't been involved in your life like that, and all of a sudden she feel like there's a need to be friends with you again, and she's also asking you for something, she's using you, sweetheart. And it's unfortunate because that is your mother. Don't think for once, for twice, or three times that just because that's your blood mother, that she's not going to use you for whatever the fuck she can get out of you. And she may feel like you naive enough to go ahead and give it to her because you might feel like, well, that's my mother. She would never do something. But let's get facts straight. Facts, honey. Just because that's your real biological blood mother don't mean that she won't treat you like shit and she won't fucking use you and walk all over you like you are a motherfucking welcome doormat in front of the motherfucking house. Okay? Your mom, from what you wrote, is a drug addict. And from what her tendencies are, sound like she's still a drug addict. She got bills. She got medication. She got rent. Let me tell you something. I understand that's your mother and you do want to get to know her. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I will never stop you from doing that. But let's open our eyes and realize who she is for who she is. Regardless, we know that she's your mama. But let's realize that she never took care of you like that. She has all of her other children except for you, which is the biracial child. She called you the N-word broke nigga. She said that, oh, these niggas, she don't mess with your dad because he's a nigga. Niggas, nigga, nigga. She don't like niggas. Okay, if you tell me, if you my real biological mother... And we finally getting to speak in and friends, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. But you, and I'm biracial because I'm biracial. You know what I'm saying? And you tell me that you don't like niggas. I don't give a fuck if you are my mom or my dad. I'm going to feel some type of way because in reality, bitch, I'm a nigga. Okay? I'm going to feel the same type of way. Like, oh, so that means you don't like me. But she could probably say, oh, no, not you, honey. You're not really all 100% nigga. No, bitch, I'm 100% nigga all the way. I don't give a fuck if I was mixed with white, Caucasian, or whatever, or motherfucking Asian, or Mongolian, and black. Bitch, I'm a motherfucking 100% nigga. So if you say you don't like niggas, then you don't like me either. And that may be the reason why you gave me up for adoption. Now, listen, you can apologize, and we can still get to want to know one another as mother and daughter. But the one thing that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to give you any money. I'm not going to give you no rides. Bitch, you don't like niggas, okay? Maybe we can meet up in public somewhere and get to know each other, but I'm not about to give you my hard-earned money. And then on top of that, $3,000, girl, that was a motherfucking crackhead move that she tried on you. She need money for a trailer. Bitch, please, that bitch already live in the trailer because she acting like she trailer trash and she's using the N-word. She's spazzing the fuck out on you. She done gave you up for adoption. Look, I'm happy that she gave you up for adoption because it seems like you're better off where you at instead of being in some dysfunctional setting. But this is the one thing that I wouldn't do. I wouldn't give her a red cent. If she wants to apologize, that's great. She apologized to you via text message. That's kind of sucky. It's not really sincere. I don't really find it to be apologetic. I don't really even believe this shit. You know what I'm saying? If you really sorry and you've done something to hurt someone or harm them, I really don't think a fucking text message is adequate a way to apologize. It's verbal or face-to-face. -face. You should never apologize to anybody via text message. Who the fuck does that? That means you ain't man enough or woman enough to stand your grounds and admit to your wrongs. So, of course, texting would be a lot easier. So, your mother has yet to come to the realization that she is a woman, okay? Because she's not being woman enough by texting you apology. Let me see. Let me say this. If you call me a broke nigga and you my you my parent and you white and you told me you don't like black people and now you call me a broke nigga because I don't have three thousand dollars to give you. You know what? I would have had to say to her, you know what? Yep, I'm a broke nigga and I'm also going to always be a nigga. So I would suggest that you don't call this nigga because I'm a nigga and you can go ahead. But. 
if you want to apologize to me by calling me a broke nigga, bitch, you're going to have to come through and come correct with more than a fact, with more than fucking text messages. We're going to have to get an apology, bitch. You're going to have to either come in my face because I'm going to really need that more than a, call, than a phone call because you could be sitting on the other line of the phone talking about, oh, I'm sorry, bitch. Yeah. You know, making all type of faces like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? Lying your ass off. Meanwhile, this is all like some attempt or some conniving scheme to use you for whatever the fuck else she can use you for. So if you really think that she's sorry, she's so apologetic, then sweetheart, she's not. Those are drug addict tendencies and drug addict moves. She's just trying to reel you back in so that way she can hook you and bait you and get you to give her more rides, more money, and whatever else the fuck she asked for. Listen. Keep your eyes wide open and yeah, get to know your mother because when I say get to know her, you'll really get to know her and then you'll be able to judge for a fact if you want her to be in your life totally or not. So get to know her, get to see what type of person she is because that one sorry don't mean shit to me. There's probably going to be a whole bunch of other sorries behind that. And if you got to constantly apologize to me for some same dumb shit, then you know what? Don't even fucking bother with me. I'm not going to constantly keep hearing the sorries and sorries and sorries. So me personally, honey, Bree. I would keep my eyes wide open and I would kind of like feed her with a long spoon. Like, let her apologize to you. She needs to apologize the right fucking way. And I understand that's your mama. You want her in her life. But, you know what I'm saying? Get to know her. Get to know her before you even do anything for her. Get to know her before, you know what I'm saying, you commit to being in like a mother and daughter type of relationship with her. But mostly get to know her because I really honestly feel like her apology was unsincere. For two, I think she only wants to be your friend or speak with you again only because she wants to hang out with you so that way she can use you for whatever monetary gains she can get out of it, okay? And still, that's not cool. And But like me personally, that kind of bothers me. This kind of bothers me for her because like, you know, here it is. You the only biracial children. Let's say there were five kids. I'm not really sure how many kids her mother had, but let's say there were five of them. You know what I'm saying? And out of all five, only one is biracial and the rest of them is 100% Caucasian. So it starts to feel like me, the biracial child, is the one standing in a circle of these little Caucasian children and all they're doing is pointing the finger and laughing at me because my Caucasian mother doesn't want to have anything to do with me because of my race and ethnicity. However, how did I get to be half black and half white? Bitch, you got fucked by, by, by a black man and you didn't seem to mind the black dick. So what's the problem now? So me, I would just kind of like keep my distance from the whole clan. I don't mean the Ku Klux Klan, but then again, who even knows? Because if bitch, you walking around talking about, I don't like niggas to your own kid, you out your motherfucking rabbit ass mind. Who the fuck is going to say some shit like that? That would be like, hmm, my brother's step my brother's mom saying to him oh i don't like niggas okay well he's half black and half white and you white bitch and you was fucking black man and now you don't like niggas then you don't like me or like me well nobody could say that to me i wish somebody would say to me they don't like niggas that was in my family hold up well i ain't got no white people in my family so not that i know of Look, I'm sitting here really thinking, like, do I got some white folk in my family? Nah, I ain't got no white people in my family. I'm sorry. They a bunch of niggas, okay? Except for, like, my dad's side. Them is Italians, but, you know, there's some niggas over there, too, though. They're not all Italian. There's some niggas over there, too. But I don't know. Like, if my mom was to say, you know, I, I, I don't know, like, I don't like to racially profile anybody. I don't like to be racist. I really don't like to be racist. You know what I'm saying? Because I think like every single race is a fucking, is, every single race could be disgusting, okay? Black people could be disgusting. White people could be disgusting. Chinese, Puerto Ricans, whatever. Whatever your fucking race is, you can be disgusting. Whatever whatever the race is, there is a person in that race who is just disgusting. Whether they're the racist, they're a rapist, they're a murderer, they're a drug dealer, they're a fucking pedophile. It doesn't matter. Every race has a fucking bunch of assholes to be a part of it. So I 
I can't ever say, I, I just don't like to be racist. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like shit like that. I just cannot stand a racist person. And then, like, what's so sad about it is, like, if your own mother can say to you, like, I don't like niggers, that's, like, the biggest insult. And, I like, for me, if that were me, I would probably just try to keep away from her because I would feel like you just don't like me. And then just to confirm that, bitch, you gave me the only one up for adoption and then turned around and had more kids, more little Caucasian babies. Like, and so, and Caucasian people, please don't feel like, oh, I'm shading you guys because I'm not like really, I'm not racist. I could care what your color is. I don't really see like, I mean, I do see color. You know what I'm saying? But if we cool, we cool. I don't care, care less what race you are. You know, but I would just feel like if you was my mama and you told me you don't like niggas, but you didn't have sex with a with a black man, like. Bitch, you was getting a D, the black D, and now you want to act like you don't like it no more. You already know that fucking black D was the shit for you. That's why you don't like niggas no more, because you can't find one to get with. So you got to stay with fucking Caucasian men, who probably ain't even hitting it right. So now you like, oh, I got all these little Caucasian babies, and I don't even like black people no more. I don't like niggas, broke nigga. And I know I probably went overboard with all of that, but I'm just saying, who would say that to their kid? I mean, let me tell you, I, I, you shit, hmm. that bitch wouldn't get a dime from me. You best to hope I don't run you over with my car instead of give you a ride with the shit. Second of all, don't really fucking call me with no fake ass apology because that was a fake ass apology. And I'm not saying not be her friend because she's nothing but a friend to you or a, a associate. She's not even your your mom like that anymore because you've been adopted. So she ain't nothing but bloodline to you. You know what I'm saying? But me personally, I wouldn't really do too much for her. She would have to prove herself. And the first part that she would have to prove herself is how to be a motherfucking mother. Okay. First, let's see how you could be a mother to me before you fucking tell me you don't like black folk and all that extra shit. And then we could talk about the relationship or going out and hanging out and loaning each other shit. Until then, bitch, just see me when you see me and be cordial and respectable. That's it. Don't loan her shit. But I really do feel like she only apologized to you because she wants something. And like I said, you'll have to get to know her to figure her out because she's just come back in your life and you do know the things about her that you know but you know what there's always a hidden agenda to, to people you really don't know people like you think you know them so Bree, take it from me and get to know her but don't give her no rods don't give her shit i mean mother's day is great you know what i'm saying you might could text her happy mother's day but your adopted mom i would definitely you know what i'm saying Give her the motherly love and attention she deserves because she's been there for you. And unfortunately, some things we do have to abandon in our lives. And being that you um, understand where I'm coming from with the abandoned issue, I think like the relationship that you are trying to gain with your mom, some of it may need to be abandoned because sometimes when we want something really, really bad, we don't see the bad that it may bring to us because we want it so bad. So, you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? So, when you want something so strongly, you want something so bad, sometimes that one particular person or thing that we want so much in our lives or we want to have, it's not a good thing for us. And we don't see that until something drastic happens. And I think you're getting the signs now because if your mother could spaz out on you and call you a broke nigga, that's hurtful. And also, how dare she even ask you for $3,000 when you couldn't even take care of me as a child. And so you expect me to give you my 100% when you couldn't even give me half of that. So I would really, you know, I would entertain the thoughts. Just go ahead and get to know her, but don't give her any time like money. Don't give her anything like money and things of that nature. Don't give her time like driving her around. She been getting around before you became back in the picture, then that bitch could still get the fuck around point blank period. So you guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm tired. I'm going to go. I got to bleach some wigs. I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you check the description box below. And I will see you guys in another video.